G'day Bifrosters. What on earth are we doing here? This isn't Bifrost. No, nope. this is Houdini. What we're doing here is we're taking a look at a Houdini node so we can recreate our own version of it. This is the first Houdini node that I've converted and I picked an easy one, the switch node. So in Houdini you can see you have a switch. Let's get a bit closer. Into that switch you have a box, a sphere and a tube coming in. The box comes in first. Houdini switches work from left to right. The box comes in first, then the sphere and then the tube and you can see the order here as well. So the box becomes input 0, the sphere becomes input 1 and the tube is input 2. And if you change this you can see this. If you go above input 2 it just stays on the last input. So let's jump across to Bifrost and make it there. So here is a plane, a sphere, and a cube. We're going to do exactly the same thing over here. So I'm going to put down a compound and I'm going to name it switch. So our first challenge is how do we get all three of these in to the switch? We can do it like that and then we can build an array in here. But there's a better way to do this. Just delete those and I'll delete this as well. So I'm going to put one in, doesn't matter which one at the moment, and I'm going to set my port type to an object array. So immediately the switch says you can't plug a single object into an array port and that's okay. We need to make sure that this is switched on, fan in. What fan in will do for us is it'll build an array of the inputs coming in and it will do it in the order that we add them, like so. You can see them here, 0, 1, 2, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and you can change the order by just simply plugging in different values. Once you're inside the switch, this is now an array to work with. Now if I was just to output this array, and then pop that into the output, it won't be happy because that output's not looking for an array. Pop it into that one. You can see that it has all three of our objects inside it. There's our sphere, there's our cube, and there's our plane. Again, not quite what we want. We don't want an array coming out of here. So we need to find a way to switch between the array coming in and any object in that array. Bifrost gives us a node to do this, which is get from array. So we'll put that in there, this one out here, and let's just jump quite out quickly and we'll hook this out. You see this is now a single object, where before it was an array. And if I change this index number, it changes what's coming in. There's, number, there's the plane, which is input 0, the sphere, which is input 1, and the cube, which is input 2. Now what happens if we go above 2? we lose everything. This is the piece of functionality we have to do a little bit of logic to pull off, but that's okay because it's a good introduction to logic. I'll be bringing logic in more and more as we go through these. And though, even though this isn't one of the quickie videos, this is a, I guess, a Frostini video. It's Houdini functionality in Bifrost. So how do we get away with this? Well, the first thing we'll do is we'll port the index out to the input. So now we can, out here, we can change our input, it's 1, 0, etc. What we'll need to do is get the array size from here. Then we need to take our index and see if it is greater than or equal to this array size. So we're going to drop down greater or equal node. And this is a comparison node which simply tests if the first input is greater or equal to the second input and it outputs a boolean, it outputs true or false. We want it to do different things depending on the value of that boolean. We want it to do one thing if it's true and another if it's false. The way we make that choice is an if node. You can see the if has a condition, a true case and a false case. The condition takes a boolean, that's what the orange color means, and this is quite simply depending on this condition if this condition is true, do this. If it's not true, 
do that. So we'll plug our condition in. So now what we're saying is, is this index that we've chosen greater than or equal to the size of the array? If it's false, if it's not greater than or equal to, which means it's less than the size of the array, that's what we have now. That's fine. We can take our index, pop it into our false case, and then wire up the if statement to the get from array. So at this point in time, if it is less than the, the size of the array, so if it's 0 or 1 or 2, it behaves normally. We get a 3 or a 5 or 28. It just takes us back to the first value of the array. We don't want that. We want it to be the last value of the array. The way we can do that is if we take it, if we think about what our array size is, so our array size is the total number of objects in the array. We can come out here and we can just go one, two, three. We have three objects in this array. But we already know that if we put three into here, it doesn't work because our indexes are zero, one, and two. So all we need to do to fix that is a decrement, which essentially just means we're going to take this much off this number. So we're just, this is essentially size minus one. We wire that into the true case. So if it's, if it's greater than or equal to the size of the array, then we want the size of the array minus one. So that at the moment is three. So this will be two into the true because it's greater than or equal to. So this is what we do if it's true. And this is what we do if it's false. So now, if I go to 0, fine, 1, fine, 2, still fine, 3, 265, it just stays at the last value of the array, which is exactly the same way as the Houdini node does it. So we've achieved our goal. We've used a tiny little bit of logic to basically test to see if the index we've chosen is greater than or equal to the size of the array. Okay, and then once we're out here, we have a switch node that is doing exactly what we want. And if I was to say, add another sphere into the array, like so, we'll just come in at the bottom here, pop that in there. Now I've got zero, one, two, three, goes back to the sphere because that is now index 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 78, and it's going to stay at the last one. So this will work with any number of objects in the array, from 4, like you see here, to 40,000, if you wanted to manually switch between 40,000 things. Luckily, you don't have to. You can also wire stuff into the index. So if I go create a value node in here, the moment is just 78. Three or two or one. So that means you could plug another condition into here that says if something is true, this is value one. If something else is true, this is value zero. Okay. So that is essentially how a switch works. Now, what's really nice is that with very few modifications, I can make this work for different values as well. So if I take a value node and make that into a float, we'll just duplicate that a bit. Four will be enough. And we'll give them some slightly different values. So I can now just wire these into here as well. It's not very happy about it because it doesn't know, well, it's expecting an object on this port. If I change this to array math float three, it will work in exactly the same way as the object switch. And then I can take this value out to, oh, the positions of the two spheres in our other switch. And now if I change this to zero, zero is go up by four. There it is. 
and one on the switch is move across by one in the z dimension zero zero one so very quickly you can attach switches to all kinds of things this works with floats this works with matrices this will work with most everything i don't actually think it's going to matter what you plug into it as long as you tell bifrost what port type it is okay so really quickly and then i'll let you go we set up a compound that had one port that was an array of objects array amino object it was also set to fan in which now allows us to plug several objects into that one port and Bifrost converts them to an array for us in the order at which they came in. Inside the node, we took the size of the array and we compared it to the index value that we were entering in. And we said, is the index value greater than or equal to the array size? And then if it was false, if it was less than the array size, we just output that straight through into the get from array which is what chooses our objects in the array based on the index and everything was fine if it was greater than or equal to if this statement is true then we took the array size reduced it by one to get the last value of the array put that through the if statement and then out and that gets us the same functionality as the equivalent node in houdini so I hope this has been useful. I'll see you next time. Thanks.